Well, hello, Dan. This is this is what an opportunity and what a fantastic opportunity. First off, I wanted to say thank you, sir, for taking the time to answer my question. Um, for those that don't know who you are, would you do a brief introduction, please? You bet. My name is uh, Dan Rauner. Um, currently work as a technician for Flight Systems Incorporated. Uh, what we do specifically is generator repair of controls. Um, voltage regulation for generators. Uh, I specify an RV. Uh, so any of your RV generators cover a great deal of those. And that's actually how I came to meet you and make your acquaintance the other day was uh, I was uh, doing some rock climbing in Kentucky and we had just spent a couple thousand dollars trying to get the generator fixed and they replaced the fuel pump, they replaced the dash switch, they replaced the controller board, they replaced um, the uh, uh, cleaned out the carburetor. They did all kinds of stuff, and it still wouldn't run. I would hold the start switch on. It would fire up, and as long as I held the start switch on, it would run, but as soon as I released the switch, the thing would immediately shut off. And I started searching across the Internet, and I happened across your information, flight systems information, and I went through your troubleshooting guide, um, and it led me to eventually, once I got all my readings and everything, then I called you, and you were so informational that I invited you to this hangout to help other people with that exact situation. So, Dan, if you have a few minutes, I would love to be able to ask you some troubleshooting, generator troubleshooting questions. Could you take about 15 minutes and answer some, some questions for us? You bet, and I greatly appreciate the, uh, the invite. This is a great opportunity, I think, to to get some information out there that a lot of people either don't have access to or don't realize that's, that's out there. Exactly, and that's what I want to change. I want, I want people to have real-world information because as soon as you told me, in fact, you even corrected me on one of my pinouts. You were like, no, Wes, it's not pin 5, it's pin 9. You knew exactly. I was like, oh. Thank you. And by the way, uh, I didn't. I did not call you back because I didn't want to mess with. I didn't want to bother you for something so trivial. But you were exactly right on the money. I had my voltage on pin nine, and I didn't have voltage on pin five. So what a great opportunity to be able to Im interview somebody with such knowledge that you you know this without even seeing it. Yeah, um, I'll tell you, I will tell you though uh, that no news is usually good news as far as uh, over the phone help goes. So that's no problem. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, from what I understand and what you shared with me at the beginning of this is the number one generator question that you receive is, Dan, when I push the start button, it'll start, but then as soon as I let go of the start button, it shuts off. Could you tell somebody, without going into the whole troubleshooting diagnostic chart, give us an overview of what to look for, please? You bet. And I'll tell you, this is very common among generators because a lot of generators are designed to look at two things in order to stay around. They have to see oil pressure. That's a must on those models. Uh, they also are going to have to sense voltage AC being made. The manufacturers figure if one doesn't happen, especially oil, you're going to damage your generator. And then if AC doesn't happen, there's no use in running it. So they're going to have it shut down as an apparent problem to identify one of those two things. Gotcha. And that, you know, one of the very first things that I did was I checked the oil and it still wouldn't run. And then I remembered reading that there has to be a certain amount of fuel in the RV also. And we only had like a quarter tank. Um, so I went over and I put a half tank in the RV because uh, in the manual it said that that could also shut off the RV. It sure, sure can. Yeah. Right? And you will run out of gas uh, about, about a quarter of a tank. The manufacturer doesn't want you to be empty. Doesn't want you to be able to empty your RV tank out, running the generator and be stranded. So the pickup for the uh, generators are almost always about a quarter of a tank above empty, so that you can't be stranded somewhere from running. The generator. Excellent. Now, in the event I've solved my gas problem, I've checked my oil and I'm full of oil. Good. I've also. Um, you mentioned this voltage thing that I want to be aware of. If I have oil and I have gas and it starts and it runs and then it shuts off, what would be the next step that I would want to do, Dan, that I could do? Things that you can do is to verify that you do 
of course, have ignition while you're pressing the start button. There is a difference between it just cranking and actually hearing it start up and try to run. Uh, it's a big uh, nomenclature difference that I have when talking to customers is that they'll tell me it's running. Well, it's not running. It's just cranking over. There's a big difference. Uh, so you want to look to see if you're getting an actual running generator while you're pressing that button or if it's just sitting there spinning by the start. The big difference, and we can go either way, troubleshooting once that's determined. And what's the easiest way to... How do you tell somebody to determine whether it's actually running or if it's just cranking over? Well, the big thing is just listen to it. I mean, you're really going to hear a difference there uh, in the engine, very similar to your, your vehicle. You know when it's just cranking over and, of course, won't start. You know when it starts and rots. And it's not just because you didn't let the key back. You can actually hear it. And the generator's going to work the same way. Uh, okay, excellent, and that makes perfect sense. All right, now that we've answered some of those common um, questions, let's start back at the very beginning. One of the questions that I ran across was when the start switch is pressed, either in the coach or at the generator itself, and nothing happens, what would be your recommendation that I check first? You bet. There's, make sure that, you're, first of all, your coach battery that your generator's cranking off of has juice. Um, a lot of the times, RVs will have a switch. Make sure the switch is on generator. If it doesn't have a switch, make sure that you can operate other things in the RV that work off the battery. At the best case, put a voltmeter to it if you happen to have one with you. Uh, it's definitely something that's going to be needed if you're going to troubleshoot generators. Uh, interior lights, there's DC lights on a lot of the newer RVs. Those will all run off of that as well. You can really tell from their brightness if you have a good charger. Uh, other thing though is most of these generators have a main fuse. It's usually very visual, located normally by the start-stop switch. Uh, they make it very accessible. Um, you definitely want to check and make sure that that has a, a good fuse in it. And that makes sense. Okay, the next the next symptom that I ran across that people uh, ask about is. What if I'm at the generator or the starter switch and all I hear is a rapid clicking noise, but the generator itself is not turning over? That is a main battery issue. battery issue. What you're what using to crank over that battery. generator either has a very low charge, and that clicking is actually your solenoid that engages the starter, chattering. It's just not enough current, voltage and current together to actually crank the generator over. It's either that or it's a wiring cable problem. So you either have corroded terminals, just like your car would have. The generator needs to have a nice, clean connection to the battery as well. And that accounts for the positive and the negative for progression. Okay. Um, what if my generator cranks over normally but just won't start? This is yes, getting a little bit more mechanical problem. Uh, you definitely are looking at something that's going to be normally either fuel-related or ignition. Um, you kind of have to go back to the basics with generators. They are a small engine, fire, fuel, um, you know, and you need to have air as well. Those three things are needed to run them. When it just cranks over, you're looking at something a little bit more mechanical, maybe not related to the generator's control, maybe more mechanical as far as fuel pump, ignition coil. Old generators have points. They ran points for a long time, into the well into the mid-80s, early 90s. And then they switched over with ignition. Moved a lot slower than the automotive style did. So that takes a little bit more troubleshooting mechanically on the engine side. Okay. What about if um, the start switch works at the generator but it doesn't work from inside the coach. Most of the generators are going to be set up in your RV with a remote, and it's a very convenient function. Uh, also, it ties in some other devices. There's usually a time totalizer or hour meter. Uh, there's also a, usually a battery condition meter on some really nice RVs that, that like to give you a lot of info. But you'd be looking at the physical connection from the control board there is a remote harness. It's 
almost always removable with a small connector. It's going to be somewhere in between that point and the actual switch. Uh, that gets tough to hunt down. It's a lot of wire on a 24 footer or something like that that's going to be ran to the remote panel. Uh, but that would be really where you can focus your troubleshooting. Okay. A couple running issues that I ran across and some symptoms that possibly you could help people out with would be why does my generator run real rough and then, I mean, in smoke even after it's warmed up? On the generator, um, this can be caused by there's a automatic choke that's found on a good deal of these generators. Um, if that does not open, you really throw off your fuel air mixture. The carburetor can't really do its job. Uh, that is a little bit more electronic. It does rely on everything working as far as the generator producing voltage in order to work. Um, you could also have a carb that's not adjusted right. Now, the one thing about these uh, generators, a lot of the manufacturers don't give you carburetor adjustments. So when you say, how can it not be adjusted right, you run into how long has it been sitting for? Is there a chance that it's got bad fuel? Um, these can all really kind of hurt the performance of the generator and how they run once they're up and, and running. Um, you can also have just basic rough... Um, foul plugs. They can cause that as well. And that's a little bit more common, especially the ones in the back that are pretty hard to get to. They don't get changed out very often. Uh, the front one is always uh, brand new <laughs> comparatively to the back one. People don't usually get to that and they're just like, I ah, won't worry about that later. That will make you uh, run rough. It'll make you smoke and carry on while, it's, while the generator's going on. That actually leads me to the next question. Is I heard that you should um, exercise, and, and I found that word odd, but they were they were saying that you should exercise your generator. Could you elaborate on that for me, please? You bet. And that exercise, exercise really is a perfect word for it. Um, generators are weird beasts. <laughs> they, they love to run. Um, it's one thing that just seems counterintuitive. You figure like a car with low miles. That's a good thing. The generators we never hear about have a thousand, two thousand hours on them, even more. They're running all the time. They're running all the time. They're being worked out, being exercised. Uh, it's good for all the internal workings, especially. There's a very important connection on most of these RV generators uh, that's concerned with a set of brushes and what we call slip rings. Um, that is very typical and very similar to like an armature on a, an electric motor. It has to be kept clean. The best way to do it is run the generator, put some load on it while it's running. It's really going to help extend the life of your generator. Wow. This is just some phenomenal information, Dan, and I certainly appreciate you taking the time to answer these these common questions, and I, I certainly hope it helps other people that run across this information. In the event that the answers that you provided tonight just weren't quite enough, and, and I hope they're enough to help people, to prevent people from getting the shotgun guesswork uh, blast at their generators at a couple thousand dollars, <laughs> How would they go about possibly getting some more information? I know I'm going to add the link to the troubleshooting guide that I found that you guys are gracious enough to A, create, and then B, share with the public. I'm going to have that listed below the video. Um, but how could, if I was in a situation where I needed some more information or I needed some parts, what would I go? how would I go about being able to either get a hold of you or your support team or flight systems to be able to get the parts that I need, sir? Sure, sure. Uh, Flight Systems is a great company as far as uh, information is concerned and our products. Um, we've been at this for a while. Uh, Generator-wise, uh, since the early 90s, it's um, almost a passion with a lot of us as technicians. Uh, what we actually go ahead and, and put out there is just info that we've put together over the years. And so it's not just me. I mean, the troubleshooting guide... Um, while I had a lot of input, there's also some other great minds there that, that have helped put it together. Uh, but we are a Monday through Friday, 
company. <laughs> we are uh, normally about 8 till about 5 o'clock. And you can get a hold of us usually over the phone during those hours. Summertime is RV time, though. So don't be disappointed if you get a voicemail you know, asking for me and you get my voicemail. It happens a good bit, unfortunately. I try to get back to everybody as soon as we can. I have some other great team members there that can answer uh, questions as well. Um, so definitely give us a try. With our, We have an 800 number. Uh, it's on our website at flightsystems.com. Post it all throughout the troubleshooting guide. Feel free to use it. Parts-wise, we really stick to just the electronics. That's our specialty. We did have to learn a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the generator operation in order to figure everything out, which has kind of helped us well around ourselves as far as troubleshooting goes. But supply-wise, just electronics, that's all flight systems gets into. Um, unfortunately, you usually are stuck with kind of going to the manufacturer for a lot of your parts. Uh, there are some good companies out there that we deal with as well, though, that are uh, distributors. Um, advanced Service and Parts is a great place. You might even want to include a link to them down there because they've helped me out a lot as well as I've helped them out. So it's a kind of, I'll scratch out that and they scratch mine. But a uh, great place to find replacement parts. Manufactured uh, from, you know, from the manufacturer or if there is a aftermarket available, we can find it there usually. So it's a really good resource, maintenance as well. Um, but yeah, there are other, between the two uh, websites, you can usually get just about everything you need, info-wise and parts-wise, uh, for your channel. Excellent information. And I wanted to add uh, just a, a little parting shot for um, just general information. It completely amazed me when I started reading the About Us that when you said you've been at this for a while and you're talking about the 80s and 90s, it actually goes all the way back to the 70s and you guys had some electronic components that were on Skylab, Apollo 11. It's just amazing. When Check out the About page if you're a viewer on this. I was blown away and, and then when I called Dan and Dan said, yeah, I would, I would love to do an interview. I was just tickled pink. So... Dan, thank you so very much for taking the time, and I will get this video posted out, and I hope it helps somebody with the frustrations and it saves them a few dollars. Phenomenal company, flightsystems.com. I'll put all the links below that Dan and I had talked about. I'll put a link to the troubleshooting guide, and everybody, I just wanted to say thank you so much, and Dan, thank you. You bet. Thank you very much for inviting me, and I'm, I'm glad we have this opportunity. Hopefully, we can uh, do a little bit more. That'd be, that'd be excellent. I tell you what, um, let's let's plan let's plan on a on a number two. And for everybody that's viewing this, just uh, look over onto the side, and you'll find part two, part three. Maybe we'll make a little series out of this, and we'll go through the whole troubleshooting manual, and and maybe we can help more and more people. Well, that'd be excellent. I would love the opportunity. Awesome, Dan. I will talk to you soon, my friend. Great. Thank you. Thank you.